All right, it's working. Welcome to part five of this, however many parts I feel like doing, series on the Sharps Carbine. I mean, I've got nothing really else to talk about. It's, uh, it's a really nice carbine. Uh, the most common of the Civil War. Perhaps not the best. It is hard to beat the Spencer. Uh, I'd say arguably better than the Henry. Definitely better than the Colt, which was a terrible carbine. I mean, good in theory, except for the fact that it would blow your hand off. Other than that, stellar. Henry was good for uh, reloading. They never made a carbine model of it, though. And uh, it was very prone to jamming and other issues on the field. Unreliable. And reliable and slower is better than unreliable and faster. Spencer Carbine, free of these problems, is the best one. Okay. See if we can... Yeah, I was losing a lot of black powder and I closed that thing, so we will have to do the next set of rounds a bit differently, I think. A little more black powder, a little less filler, we'll probably hit that sweet spot. But until then, let's see if we can teach Johnny Bottle a lesson about freedom and abolitionism. And, well, I mean, technically the restriction of slavery into the expansion of the Western territories and free labor ideology and economics, but let's, let's, let's just shoot a bottle. Swing and a miss. One last go. It would be nice to end with a hit. Redeem myself a little. It's harder than it looks at this distance. It really is. I swear. Assuming I got any rounds left. Here's one. Ah, uh, shoot. Nope. This one just came apart in my hands. The rounds are a bit complicated to make. It's uh, You basically glue the bullet into the paper cartridge, so occasionally it comes loose. This one, it just it just popped right out. So that's not, I'm gonna have to remake that. Which is all well and good, because I don't think these lows are right anyway. So I'm gonna try to make some more modifications. Hopefully, you know, before the summer's over, I'll figure out how to make a proper sharps round. Close, <sighs> blow, look at all that powder that went flying. It's probably like half the charge, and that's why these things are so weak right now. Drop my cap. All right, Johnny Bottle. Mr. Confederate Plastic. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's just not working out. I'm having no luck today. <sighs> Sharps is still fun to shoot though. One last shot and then I think We'll probably call it. Maybe I'll take one last shot at the, uh, actually, maybe I don't have enough bullets for that. I'm about to run out. Take one last shot at the paper target as well, I think, and then we'll call it. And cap. Okay, you know what? That bottle's just not just not having it. Oh, sad. A bit distressing, really. One last round. Paper target. See if we can get a decent shot on it. Next time I come out here, we'll do slightly stronger load and see if that helps at all. Ah, there's some of the cornmeal because this one opened right up. <laughs> okay. Low shot. Oh, that looked good. Some minor redemption. Come on. near bullseye by the looks of it. Let's go find out. Just sling up the sharps. Yeah! Like I'm Wyatt Earp. Or, uh, no, uh, Le Beef from uh, True Grit. Great movie. Really paid the sharps carbine its due tribute. Even if Matt Damon was using a 4570 government conversion rather than a good old fashioned paper cartridge model. Oh, now look at that. 
Very nice. Aiming low, had a predictable shot. So we can probably say with some certainty that it's pre-sighted to 100. So it's doing fine at the paper target. Not sure why I can't hit those things. But I always have trouble shooting the bottles. Harder target, I guess. Anyway, assuming this thing's still recording, thank you for joining me at uh, my local range for the Sharps Carbine. Truly one of the most exciting weapons of the Civil War. You know, outside of the Model 1861 Springfield, obviously.